We're now ready to put music and sound effects in our game. I've got four new sound assets. I've got a sound explosion, a sound bounce, and a sound laser. And these are all normal sounds. And then I've got a sound music, which is a background music track from incompetech.com. And so let's implement these. First, let's open up the object ball. And in the object brick one collision, we will come to main one, find our sounds, play sound, put it underneath the bounce against all solid objects. You could also put it at the top. Uh, we want it to play the sound bounce, loop to false. We don't want it to loop. Come to our object paddle collision, bring that over. Select the bounce again, object wall, add another one, and object locked, we can add another one. It doesn't really matter where this is placed, so long as the object ball will not be destroyed before the sound will be played. So bounce one more time, that should do it for the ball, so close that. Then we'll come down and open up our object paddle laser. And in the up event, we can open up our main one and we will add a sound. How about underneath the creation of the object laser? So we will set this to sound laser. And that'll be good. We can close that. And then let's come down to our object explosion and we will have this play as soon as the explosion is created so add event create come over to main one click our sound and we will set this to sound explosion loop to false say ok and then let's come down to our object enter since that is the first object that will be on the title screen and thus created in the game we will add event other game start and then we want to bring in a sound, we want to play our background music, and we want to set loop to true. Click OK, and OK. And one final bit of polish and debugging that I want to do is fix our object locked. The object locked is not considered a child of the object brick one. And right now we have the object ball, the lasers, and the hitbox checking to make sure there are no object bricks on screen before we win or move to the next room. But that's not having any effect on the object locked, which means that we can have those bricks still on screen and we will be able to move on to the next room or win the game. So let's open up our object ball again. And in the object brick one collision, we're going to come down to the bottom with our test number of instances. And I'm going to copy this and paste it and I'm going to change the second one so that instead of object brick one it's going to be looking for this object locked. Click OK. When you have two conditional actions like this one after the other they sort of act in tandem. Think of it like there's a little and in between them. So what's going to happen here is it will check to make sure that there are no instances of object brick one available. And then it will check to see if there are no instances of object locked. If both of those conditions are true, then we will go to the next room. Since an object locked can turn into an object brick, we want to make sure that the player has to clear the room of those as well. So I'm going to copy this second one and close the object ball. And then we're going to open up the object laser, come to object brick one, and again underneath the test for instance number, we're going to paste our object locked so that it's checking to make sure there are no bricks and no object locks. Close that and then open the object hitbox, the object brick one collision, and underneath the instances test again, paste in the uh, test for the object locked. Click OK. And now we're ready to test it for the last time. I have actually added a second room just so we can see what happens when we clear a room and move on to the next one. So let's try it.
I have modified the room so it's easier to beat. If I can in fact beat it. Okay, we moved on to the next level. Got my second life. And let's see if I can get this last brick. Hooray! That's the game. And I modified the game just quick so I can test for the explosions. And it works. And so that should do it. Our game is now much more interesting to play than it was before, but there are still even more things we could add to the game. I believe in the original Arkanoid there were also little enemies that wandered around the screen. And instead of a stationary block, you might have another paddle that moves back and forth across the room, so the player would be challenged to get past the computer player. Hopefully at this point you are at least somewhat comfortable with the basics of Game Maker so you can add in stuff like that on your own, and at the very least be able to think through some of the bugs and problems that pop up. As we saw in these videos, I even had a few problems, but generally they're easy to fix. Just little things that you'll forget or mistype or something stupid. But just don't panic, think through it, and, you know, if you were following along and something messed up, just go back a video and try it again. But for all of the seeming complexity we had in making this game, Brick Breaker games are actually pretty simple. So I think it's time that we move on to something different and learn some new game concepts.